welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the first video in the series uh, about me making a mini bandsaw. The reason for doing this is I end up with an awful lot of offcuts uh, in aluminum and in acrylic especially that I just don't feel comfortable with uh, using the machines I normally work with them. Especially the acrylic because I cut it almost all on my uh, table saw. And when you get down to certain sizes it's just not safe to use uh, for uh, the tiny little pieces. And I, didn't, I tend to find I need uh, more small pieces, especially when I'm doing the uh, canopies for uh, making the LEDs. And so I figured what I'd do here is I'd make a small uh, bandsaw. And normally when I do this build, especially for the, uh, the belt sander that I just finished doing, well, a little while ago now I guess, uh, is I would just jump straight into it and uh, make uh, the drive wheel and uh, go from there and figure, thing out, figure things out as I go along. But I've come to realize that a bandsaw is a little bit more complicated than a belt sander. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a mock-up. Uh, this piece of plywood I've cut and uh, drilled and everything is about the maximum size I'd feel comfortable putting on my lathe and what I'm going to do is as I see I'm cutting uh, marking out holes here what I plan to do is make an arbor and then drill through the sheet of aluminum that I'm going to put on here or um, round bar depending upon what's just cheaper and what I'm going to do is then stick it in the lathe and then what I can do is I can reverse it so when I add um, when I add the bushings and uh, probably going to have to add uh, roller bearings that sort of stuff I'd be able to flip it back and forth and then I can make the belt that runs <laughs> there's a reason why I'm going to use an arbor because any bolt that you tie um, there's no way you can tighten it down far enough that it would uh, stay um, solid for turning so with the arbor with the four holes I think it should be fine so I'm going to do here ah, there you go it's completely loose now so I'm going to tighten that up so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece of plywood and I'm going to try seeing how it fits uh, around uh, all the different uh, parts of the lathe and I'm going to try turning a little bit. I've never actually ever turned wood on the lathe, my lathe before, but I'm sure it should be pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is uh, test it out so before I end up spending, actually it's fairly, uh, fairly expensive to buy, uh, uh, this is uh, seven and a half inches this piece, uh, even like seven and a half or eight inch. Uh, round bar and say about uh, two inch piece would be probably about forty dollars so uh, before I go spending any kind of money at all I just wanted to make sure how things are going to fit so and also I have to figure out ratios for speeds and because I don't want to run the motor I picked up was uh, 1725 rpm and I'm gonna have to bring that down at least a little bit depending upon what speeds are um, comfortable for cutting the various materials I want to do uh, so I need to figure out what's the most comfortable or <laughs> all right let's not call it comfortable because I, if I were going to be comfortable with this it would be a lot smaller than this uh, so what's the maximum I can put on the lathe and be able to machine it so that I can get the tracking for the blade and also the V groove so I can put a, a belt on this and then uh, once I know those maximum sizes then I can figure out what size to make the dry wheel and possibly depending upon how ambitious I decide to get I might make um, multiple um, uh, sizes for the dry wheel so that I can have uh, different speeds but we'll wait <laughs> until I at least figure out things out a little bit before I get too ambitious with this now I plan on uh, having, if you remember the belt sander, the, um, the idle wheels are only supported from one side. Because there's a lot more tension on the belt, I plan on supporting on both sides. Oh, hold on a sec. Now here's my problem. The slide, as far back as it can go, is going to interfere with seven and a half inches. So what I'm going to have to do to this piece of wood is uh, turn it down until that clears and also so that the cutting tool will still function. So unfortunately what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to, you can see the slide is back. I think I have enough um, positive uh, grip on with a adjustable slide that I, uh, for, for at least for turning wood, and I suspect for turning aluminum as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna machine that down. I wouldn't be any com more, com uh, <laughs> so I wouldn't be comfortable 
uh, turning this down anymore, like, or how should I should say having less support. So uh, this is about as big as I'm going to get. So I'm going to machine this until, uh, or sorry, I should just turn it down, until that slide clears. And then I'm going to see what diameter uh, is my absolute maximum. And you'll see in a few minutes here, uh, once I get this down a little bit more, what I'm going to do is uh, pan back to the other side and you can see the, them clearing. And then once that's done, I'll take it off the machine and we will uh, figure out what the maximum is. And uh, again, because this is wood, it's not such a bad, uh, well, not such a difficult thing to do. There you go. The blade is just skimming now. And you see I have about an eighth of an inch clearance on uh, the slide itself. So that would be the maximum. Now I figure what I should do is I can see if I can actually still do any turning on this. So I'm, you can see some wood flying there. I'm just uh, having the blade skim on the inside. Again, because aluminum is fairly soft and easy to work with, I should be able to get away with doing that. And if, especially if the material I end up choosing is pretty close to what the maximum is, but who knows? So what I've done here is I've taken it all off now and I'm going to measure what that is. And as it turns out, it is 7 inches. Now, I don't think round bar comes in 7 inches. It might. I'm not entirely sure. But that would give me a substantial size for a drive wheel. Uh, sorry, uh, for the belt. The wheel for where the, um, the band is going to fit on the saw blade itself. Now... This is a piece of the uh, original bar I used for uh, when I was making the uh, belt sander. It's three inches in diameter. This is a comfortable, everything works perfectly fine size <laughs> for my lathe. Uh, now obviously I can make some adjustments to go up much higher, but if I stick with this size, I mean I can turn it down to, uh, you know, I think that this is a three-quarter inch bar. I can easily turn it down to that without any problem. It would be a lot of waste, of course. I can buy smaller bars for the drive wheel. But if I want to make a staged drive bar, uh, sorry, a staged drive wheel, uh, like I can have like different settings for the belts, I would need to probably start with something about this size. But I'll have to figure that out later. Let's see, yeah, <laughs> this is the other problem I was coming across when I was thinking about this. If I do, if I use this size for the belt, oh, sorry, not the belt. I keep thinking of my belt sander. If I keep, if I use that for uh, the band saw, like for the blade, it's going to have a very little clearance between um, both sides of the blade, like going up, like going down. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, have an extra wheel, and that can get to be a little annoying too. So I don't know. I'll have to figure that out as we go along. This is just me testing out various RPMs for cutting the th two materials that I'm most likely going to be using. I'm going to start off at 23 meters per minute, and this is 35. And as it turns out, to get a nice clean cut with acrylic, which is, this is quarter inch acrylic, uh, the faster the speed, the better, which is not terribly surprising because I cut it on my uh, table saw, so. And this is at 75 meters per minute. This is the maximum my uh, offcut saw will do. And you see it just slices quite nicely, and the cut is smoother than, if you remember, the, the, the 23 uh, meters per minute. Now this is aluminum. This is most likely the size I'll be cutting on the bandsaw, which should just be 1 8 uh, And this is at the slowest again, at 23. And aluminum cuts better at uh, slower than the maximum speed, uh, but even here at 23, it's not a, a smooth cut, so I most likely won't be using that at all. This is 35, this is the mid-range, and this is actually the preferable speed uh, for when I cut aluminum. It's, uh, it feeds through quite nicely, there's no binding in it or anything, and you get a nice smooth cut. And then I'm going to do it at 75. Uh, I don't have the sound on, but you get a little bit more of a vibration with the material because, it, I mean, it slices cleanly and everything still, but I think it's uh, pushing it a bit fast. So I suspect I'll end up uh, using somewhere mid-range. Now you have my apologies, but it's time to do some math. Uh, it's unavoidable because I need to calculate out uh, what kind of cut down I'm going to use for... Well, I'm going to plan on using a drive belt between the drive wheel and the main support wheel where the 
uh, the band's going to be on, and I want to know um, how much I'm going to have to be able to uh, reduce the, the RPMs so that I end up with a uh, functional amount of uh, footage going through uh, whatever piece I decide to cut. So if I use a 1-inch diameter, it gives me a half-inch radius. And if I go to a 3-inch diameter, it gives me an inch and a half radius. And that ratio ends up being 3 to 1. So every time the drive belt goes around the drive uh, wheel, uh, it'll only turn uh, the actual belt, well, for the where the, the band is, will only go down one third. So what that does for me at a uh, one inch drive wheel at 1725 uh, RPM gives me 137 meters per minute um, of the belt turning if I had a one to one ratio. A three to one that cuts it down to 45 uh, meters per minute which is a little higher than the 35 I was doing in my tests on the offcut saw, but I think it's going to be comfortable. Now I need to figure out whether I'm comfortable with a one inch drive wheel or if I'm going to make multiples. And then again, what size I can uh, have as a maximum for the other end where the uh, band saw is going to be. But all those things I'm going to figure out and hopefully in video two, I'll have uh, done some thinking and uh, we'll actually start turning some metal. And thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you like this style of video. If you do, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in video two. Thank you very much.